Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe. Revelation by Liz Lockhead Liz Lockhead was born in Scotland in 1947. She taught art before becoming a poet. Since 2011, she has held the position of National Poet of Scotland. Her poems usually focus on a celebration of both female and Scottish identity. Her poems usually centre on her own experiences and they often contain a deeply personal element to them. Can you remember a time from your childhood when you saw something or were told something that caused you to lose your innocence? The loss of innocence is a theme running through this poem. Revelation, the title Revelation. A revelation is when you find out some secret that others were not telling you before. The last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, God reveals what will happen at the end of time and the day of judgment. In this poem, some new information is revealed, is shown gradually to the girl, which eventually causes her to lose her innocence. I remember once being shown the black bull. The poet remembers her childhood, the first time somebody showed her the black bull. When a child at the farm for eggs and milk. That day, somebody sent her to the nearby farm to collect eggs and milk. And that is the day somebody showed her the big bull and she started to lose her childhood innocence. They called him Bob. We associate Bob with a friendly guy such as Bob the Builder. So the family who owned the farm called the bull Bob. As though perhaps you could reduce a monster. She's saying that the family gave the monster, as in the bull, a friendly name such as Bob. But just because you give somebody a friendly name does not take away the fact that they could be really dangerous. With the charm of a friendly name just because the family called him Bob. A nice friendly name does not mean that he's not dangerous. It, the friendly name does not make him friendly. It's a trick almost. At the threshold of his outhouse. So the girl was standing at the door at the threshold just outside the outhouse the farmhouse where the bull was kept. She also is standing at the threshold of continuing to be a child and losing her childhood innocence. She's standing on the edge and one step forward she's going to find out something that will take away all her childhood innocence. Someone held my hand and let me peer inside. She remembers that day. She was still very small because an older person took her by the hand and allowed her to peer inside, allowed her to peep inside at this strange bull that she knew nothing about. At first, only black and the hot reek of him. So when she first peered in through the door, she only saw darkness and blackness. So the first thing she saw was darkness. 
Secondly, she started to smell the hot reek, the hot smell of him. So the poet uses her senses here to describe her first experience with the bull. Then he was immense. So as her eyes started to adjust to the darkness of the room where the bull was kept, she suddenly realized that he was immense, that he was absolutely huge. She realized something huge was in this shed, something she'd never seen before. His edges merging with the darkness. So she could see the outline or the shape of the bowl connecting with the darkness of the room. Just a big bulk and a roar to be really scared of. A big bulk just something huge she just noticed this huge shape of something in that guard in that farmhouse shed and the way he roared the way he shouted it made her really scared she heard a trampling she heard the sound of the bull hitting the ground with his heavy feet just like the sound of an elephant hitting the ground with his feet. Then she heard a clanking, which is the sound of metal hitting off metal. This, of course, was the sound of the bull's chain, which was keeping him tied up in that farm shed. Tense with the chain's jerk. The reason she heard the sounds of the chain and the clanking was because the bull was jerking and pulling his chain, always trying to escape. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to subscribe. His eyes swiveled in the great wedge of his tossed head. So now she could see his eyes were rolling up in his head, in the great wedge of his tossed head. The huge size of his tossed head, his head was up in the air. He was like some mad monster with eyes rolling up in his head. He roared his rage. She could hear that he was absolutely angry from the way he roared inside the shed. His nostrils gaped like wounds. She could see his large nostrils, the holes in his nose, which were open like wounds, like cuts in his nose. All of these images are very scary for this young girl. The bull revealed or showed himself gradually step by step. Just like the girl started to lose her innocence gradually and slowly and slowly learned about sexuality. What was this bull doing? What is his use in this shed or on the farm? And in the yard outside. So inside the shed was a monster. A, mo a bull, a male, outside in the farmyard. Oblivious hens picked their way about. Oblivious is just like the man in the photo. It's when you don't know there is some danger ahead. You don't really know the reality of what's going on. So these hens, which represent the females in the poem, were just busy picking their way about the farm. They were not aware of what was inside the shed. They were also very innocent, like the girl. The faint and rather festive tinkling. The hens, when they were out in the yard, just picking the ground, 
The only sound they could hear from the garden shed was faint sound, meaning a soft sound, which was festive, just like the Santa's reign there in the photo. He has a bell around his neck. And often bells are associated with the sound of Christmas, festive sounds. Tinkling is the sound of little bells ringing together. So the hens were out in the yard and all they knew is that something inside that shed was making a soft, gentle, festive tinkling sound. Behind the mellow stone and hasp was all they knew. So basically the hens were out in the, in the yard pecking the ground and they just knew that the bull was in the stone house, house made of stone. Here they call it mellow stones, like calm and relaxed. Mellow means calm. So from the outside, this house made of stone in which the bull lives looks mellow and calm. And the hasp is what we see here on the left, is the lock for the door. So. The only things the hen knew, the hens knew, is that there was a stone house and inside the stone house, which looked very relaxed, was just some soft, gentle sounds of bells ringing, which in fact is the sound of the bull's chain. Of that black mass. Now, black mass, if it has a uh, lowercase b and lowercase m just means something huge that is colored black. But here black mass has capital letters, which actually means people who worship Satan having some rituals. So the poet is calling the bull using a metaphor of black mass, saying that he's evil like the devil. straining at his chains. He was like the devil down in hell, chained up. She knew that, but the hens didn't know it at all. They just knew there was a soft sound of chains. So in fact, the hens are still innocent, but the girl is starting to lose her innocence. I had always half known he existed. So what she's saying here is she had never understood about sexuality before, but she had half known, she had a small feeling that there was something like that in the world. This antidote. An antidote is medicine given to someone who has taken poison to try and cure them think what she feels here is that her innocence, her brain, her heart has been poisoned now. Poisoned by the fact that she understands about sexuality and why the bull is on the farm. Antichrist. The Antichrist again is like a symbol of the devil and Satan. She thinks now that there is evil in the world. She just starts to find out that for the first time. She starts to be scared. She's probably heard of these things from religion, from going to church. But now it's her first time experiencing evil in the world through the bull. His anarchy threatening the eggs. Anarchy of the bull. He's wild. He wants to break free. He wants to cause damage and chaos and disturb everywhere he goes. Just like the picture of the anarchy on the streets there with the overturned car. She has been sent to that farm to collect eggs and milk. She's probably holding those eggs now in a basket. And she feels that if this bull escapes from his guard, from his shed, that he will threaten the eggs. He will possibly bring danger to the eggs. He could run after her and knock the eggs out of her hands. 
The eggs are well-rounded and self-contained. Self-contained flat. It's like a flat that has everything. You don't have to share with other people. You have your own bedroom, your own bathroom, your own kitchen. Just like that, the eggs are round and self-contained. They have the shell on the outside, protecting the yolk on the inside. And the placidity of milk. Milk, placidity means calmness and quiet. So basically what she's trying to do here is compare male and female. The bull is representing something evil and the female images here are eggs and milk representing something that can be easily broken or damaged. I ran, my pigtails thumping alien on my back in fear. She suddenly became overwhelmed by fear and she decided she had to run away as quickly as possible. Her pigtails are those two things, her hair tied up on both sides. Her pigtails were thumping, just like the picture of the rabbit. Thumping means beating hard. Her hair tied up in pigtails as she ran were beating hard, thumping, alien. If you see from the picture, aliens come from outer space, but also something alien is like something strange. She had never felt this fear and the feeling of her pigtails thumping off her back before. I ran past the big boys in the farm lane. She's now scared of males because she understands the bull is male and that if he was to get near her or break free, he could absolutely knock the eggs out of her hands, spill the milk and do damage. So now she's starting to be afraid of boys as well. And she's also learned about sexuality. The reason the bull is on that farm is to mate with the cows. So now she sees all boys as potential bulls, something that may hurt girls and females. Who pulled the wings from butterflies? She knows that these big boys, for fun, like pulling the wings of the most beautiful butterflies. Again, a symbol or metaphor that boys are dangerous to women. And boys who blew up frogs with straws. Just for fun, these big boys were inserting drinking straws into frogs and blowing into them, causing the frog to swell and burst. She now realises there is evil in the world and she had been so innocent just before this trip to the farm. She ran past thorned hedge and harried nest. We have a picture of a bird here sitting on a thorn. Thorn, something that can cut you, something that can hurt you. Again, that's a symbol of what bad boys can do. The hedge is the green area. So she ran past a thorny hedge. Possibly it cut her. And she noticed a harried nest. A nest and eggs, of course, represent female. And those big boys had broken the eggs of the bird. Again, the symbol and metaphor of the bull and the males causing harm and damage to the fragile, delicate females in the poem. Scared of the eggs shattering. So she was so scared while she was running home that the eggs would break. A picture here of eggs shattering eggs broken into thousand pieces could symbolize or be a metaphor for men who destroy women's lives and their lives are broken into thousand pieces only my small and shaking hand on the jug's rim she noticed her hand was so small and it was shaking because she was terrified and she put her small hand over the rim or the top of the jug 
again the jug is like a symbol for female a container for milk she was trying to protect her feminine identity in case the milk should spill she was trying to protect the milk from the boys from the bull from evil in the world this poem appeals to our senses our senses of seeing smelling hearing the poet appeals to our senses she describes his bulk how huge it was to see this bull his smell she talks about the hot reek of him and his roar which scared the girl the imagery in this poem the bull is a metaphor or symbol for male sexuality male power and male aggression the hens eggs and milk are the metaphors or symbols for the feminine world females are fragile and can be easily harmed is the message we're getting from this poem if you liked this video please like and subscribe and you can also check out Michelle Benson, English teacher on Facebook.